One of the crypto sectors that I'm most bullish on going into the next bull run is the GameFi sector. I believe that GameFi has the potential to be one of the biggest use cases for crypto, period. It's also a sector that most of the big money has up to this point ignored, leaving some insane upside potential. And in this video, I'm looking at 12 different GameFi plays, some of which I'm personally looking at getting into, and others that I would personally avoid. To me, it is clear as day that GameFi is going to be huge, and I think it's going to be a lot bigger than most people can imagine because it's going to take gaming to a height that most people just didn't anticipate gaming could go. GameFi is the general concept of crypto and gaming mixing together to some degree. That could be with NFTs, tokens, having games on chain, having a DAO that votes on game changes, expansions, balance tweaks, etc. Decentralized game development, tokenized crowdsourced game fundraising, or any combination of all of the above and so much more. GameFi is in essence potentially a massive disruptor to traditional gaming systems, it's just most people don't realize it. And the reason most people don't realize the potential of GameFi is that the current state of GameFi is absolutely terrible. Currently, the GameFi space is made up of really boring games, scammy tokens, NFT sales, and in general, just a lot of really gimmicky feeling things. And even despite all that, I believe that GameFi is inevitable and will change the gaming space as we know it. And my core reason with having to believe this has to do with digital ownership. When most people think of NFTs, they think of monkey profile pictures that people trade for insane amounts of money. However, that is probably the worst example of what NFTs actually are. The reason that NFTs are so revolutionary is that they enable digital ownership and digital scarcity. Now we're all familiar with physical ownership and physical scarcity. We have things like Rolex watches, we have purses, we have cars, we have trading cards, we have art. And in the physical world, an item can have a history. Certain artifacts owned or held by historical figures could have a valuation upwards of millions of dollars because they were held and owned by that person and because they have a story attached to them. For example, like Napoleon's gold encrusted sword, which sold for 6.5 million in 2007. Or like these coins, which are just small pieces of metal, but valued at $4.3 million. Then there's the Mona Lisa valued at 850 million dollars. Which in essence, the Mona Lisa is just paint and paper. And if I really wanted, I could go buy a cheap knockoff reprint of the Mona Lisa and hang it in my house if I really valued the, you know, look of the art that much. Yet even still, the authentic, genuine Mona Lisa, because of its history, because of the story attached to it, is worth $850 million. Those things hold so much value because of the history tied to those objects. Compare that to the digital space and objects can't have history. Nothing is ownable and there's no such thing as digital artifacts. But I want you to imagine if there were. Imagine if Steve Jobs was a gamer and he played something like Fortnite or Call of Duty Warzone. And in the game, he has this iconic skin that he always plays with. And let's imagine it's like a giant apple head because, you know. <laughs> His company is called Apple. And let's imagine if that exact Apple head was an ownable and tradable asset. And after Steve Jobs passed away, his family took that asset and they put it up for auction for charity. And let's say in the game, whether it's Fortnite or Call of Duty Warzone, any other player could buy like that exact same skin. They could go buy a skin that's an Apple head that looks you know, identical to the Apple head that Steve Jobs wore. But it wasn't the exact Apple head that Steve Jobs war. That one is a very specific NFT that was up for auction that people could buy. Do you think that the Apple head skin that Steve Jobs specifically played with, even though it's just digital code and other players could get the exact same type of skin, do you think that one specifically would sell for more money or the exact same price that other Apple heads sell for? And keep in mind that this specific skin would have a history on the blockchain that showed that Steve Jobs was the original owner. I think the answer is clear that that skin would sell for far more than the average Apple head. And that's how powerful digital ownership and digital scarcity are, and that's exactly why NFTs are so revolutionary. They were the first time that you could own something that was purely digital, that was scarce and a specifically identifiable thing. And although so far, you know, with NFTs being so new, the use cases have been really gimmicky. It's not hard to imagine, like in my example, how the use cases and how this technology could grow into something that's so much more. Eventually, I believe in games, almost every digital item will be an NFT. 
And again, forget how NFTs are used today. Just imagine you're playing a game. You're not, you're not having to go buy these items. Imagine you're running around Skyrim, you pick up an apple, you put that into your inventory. That's now an NFT you own. You got it for free. You got it in the game. You didn't have to go buy it. It's just, it just means it's an asset that you own that you can then do whatever you want with. And you know, a lot of those things you're going to do nothing with because they're going to be useless and worthless. But some of these things are going to be really scarce. They're going to be maybe really rare. They're going to have a history and they're going to accumulate a lot of value. And there's so much more to game five than just the NFT aspect as well. You could have things like on-chain governance, which would allow players to have a say in a vote on different balance tweaks within the game and changing the meta. Decentralized world building would allow games to build bigger and quicker by allowing emergent games that were co-built and funded by a community. This is similar to the user-generated content trend that we see in games like Minecraft and Roblox, although with different elements like digital ownership, DAOs, grants, etc. Keep in mind today, the video game industry is bigger than Hollywood, the sporting industry, and the music industry combined. And I believe that digital ownership and scarcity will make it leagues more valuable in the future. So let's dive into 12 different Game 5 plays going into the next bull run. But first, none of this is investment advice. None of this is me telling you to buy these things, you should always do your own research and blindly copying YouTubers is a great way to lose all of your money. Number one is Alluvium. This is one of the biggest game five games there is currently and is top notch as far as quality. The concept is simple. Think Pokemon, but if all your Pokemon were unique and rare ownable game assets, you can sell and trade. So you go out and you're exploring the world and maybe you come across a really rare Alluvial and say this one's like a super rare one that's really hard to get. Well, you can either train it up and use it in the game to go, you know, capture even more rare alluvials or, you know, battle other players, or you could sell it on the open market. And that alluvial would be worth whatever, you know, other players are wanting or willing to pay for it. So if the game was widely played and a lot of people were trying to catch, you know, and collect that alluvial, maybe it's worth, uh, you know, a lot of money. Or maybe it's just worth $50 or $100 or something around that. I think one important detail is these things don't have to sell for a lot. You know, maybe some will, but most would be happy to find an in-game item and you know make 50 bucks selling it and if the game is taking a transaction fee from each sale the profit for the company behind the game could be massive now alluvium has a bunch of other features besides just alluvials i won't dive into all of those currently though currently the token is basically flat over the month and down over the year by almost 50 percent at its all-time high, one token was worth $1,886, and today it's worth $41. So if it were to just reach its all-time high, that would be a 46x from here. And back then, the game was still in development and wasn't playable. Today, it's in beta. But regarding the all-time high, there is a bit of a hidden deception here most people probably aren't aware of. While the all-time high price might be a 46x from current price, the all-time high market cap is just an 8x from here. Basically, there's more tokens in circulation today, which has pushed down the price, meaning the 8x to all-time high is the more accurate benchmark here. Looking at the current fully diluted value, there's actually a bunch more ILV that can be unlocked over time. I do think there's a massive amount of potential with this game, and it'll truly come down to how popular and fun the game is. Given this is the closest thing to a AAA game in the space currently, if we did see a bull market and any sort of traction in the GameFi space, I wouldn't be shocked to see a 5 to 7x from here for the ILV tokens. And that would push the price to about its old all-time high as far as market market cap. Anything above that, in my opinion, would have to see, you know, Alluvium gaining some serious adoption and traction. This is one I do personally own myself and am holding until the next bull run. Second up is Parallels. Parallels is a card game sort of like Magic the Gathering, but all online using NFTs. It recently launched its beta and so far has been a huge success. A cool part of Parallels is you don't need the NFTs to play, it's free to play. The NFTs instead just allow you to win tournament prizes and other perks. Their token is the Prime token. It's used for governance, token gated products, services, and experiences called Prime Sinks. The market cap for Prime is 77 million, but the fully diluted market cap is 331 million. And as cool as the game is, I actually wouldn't currently buy this token myself. I think that the game has a lot of potential, but with such a big difference between market cap and fully diluted market cap, I'm hesitant to buy the token currently, especially considering it recently had a run up in price with the beta release. So it's a good project that I like, but I'm currently wary of buying the token at this moment. Number three is Ronin. Ronin is the blockchain that Axie Infinity is built on. It's meant to be a gaming dedicated blockchain and Ronin is famous for all the wrong reasons. If you've been in this space for a little bit, you might remember the legendary Ronin bridge hack where hackers stole $650 million from Ronin. Axie Infinity was never really fun in the first place. And although the Ronin network has five 
five other games on chain, I just don't see it going anywhere. The hack was a huge loss of confidence and I think there are other blockchains far better suited for gaming, so I would avoid this one personally. Number four is Star Atlas. Star Atlas is maybe the most ambitious GameFi project there is. Think of something like EVE Online or Starfield level game ambitions, only maybe even bigger. The big question is, will this small indie crypto gaming team be able to pull off something that massive in scale. Games of that scale usually take sometimes decades to build and a lot of money, which is why Star Atlas has been slowly rolling out features over time as development progresses. Most of these features so far, at best, you could maybe consider a mini game. It's things like buying collectibles, joining factions, uh, really not much. They do seem to be currently working on some sort of racing mini game that looks interesting. It's currently at 14 million in market cap and 52 million in fully diluted value. At its height, the token had a market cap of 428 million. That's a 30x from today's prices. Currently, the demos look promising and their website and marketing is super sleek. With all that, I could definitely see them doing a 30x or more next bull run. And over the long run, if they were to actually deliver on their promises, I could see the token going much higher than that. And I have eight more ideas to share, but really quick. If you're interested in staying up to date with the crypto market, you only have two weeks left to join the Obsidian Council before I close off group access. By joining the Obsidian Council, you get access to monthly research on all the projects I'm looking at and investing into for the next bull run, airdrop guides, in-person meetups, free access to the airdrop masterclass course, a $299 course, the node operators course, and you're able to buy the ghost tiger strategy at a massive discount, which will also only be available for two weeks for a public beta. Currently, if you want to buy the ghost tiger strategy outright, you can buy it for $599. Or if you become an Obsidian Council premium member, it's only $99 as an add-on at beta prices. But keep in mind, these are beta launch prices. The prices will go up when I do the full launch. Again, access to the ghost tiger strategy and access to the Obsidian Council will only be available for two more weeks before I close off both and no one else will be able to join. There's a link in the description if you're interested in joining. Number five, I think, is pronounced Exociety. Exociety looks and feels a lot like Fortnite. It's a shooter game in the same vein and the gameplay looks amazing. Currently, this project doesn't have a token, but it does have NFTs you can buy and possibly earn an airdrop if they do release a token. I currently really like how this game looks and feels. It looks like they're making first a really great game and then later on the line thinking about how to you know, add a token and how to build an economy and different things like that, which is probably how it should be done. There's not a lot to say about this project currently, but it is definitely one I'm going to be keeping my eye on. Number six is Sand. Sand is a game five platform really similar to something like Roblox. If you don't know, the annual revenue of Roblox is $2.2 billion. It's basically a shared universe game where developers can build their own games using the Sandbox platform. Currently, Sandbox makes around $7 million in revenue. But you can imagine if it gains traction similar to Roblox, the revenue potential is massive. Current market cap for the Sand token is $628 million, while the fully diluted value for the Sand token is $913 million. If it hit just its old all-time high, it would be at 10x from here, which I personally think is reasonable and would be extremely happy with. I currently hold some Sand tokens as it was one of the five projects syndicators AI predicted could 100x or more next bull run, which I go more in depth in that video if you want to check it out. Number seven is Magic. Magic is a project I used to be a huge fan of and I invested in last year. I bought Magic back when it was around 20 cents and sold it around $1.20, doing almost a 6x on my money. However, since then, I've been hesitant to jump back in. The Arbitrum network has lost some of its luster due to competition from optimism and base. As well as Magic had a lot of hype from being listed on Binance, which was one of the main factors that drove up the price, but ever since then, it's been a slow price decline, and personally, I won't be touching it until the decline flattens out. Long term, I think it can surpass its bear market high and do at least a 5x from here, but again, still wouldn't buy it with the current price action. Number eight is Immutable X. Immutable X is maybe at the core of the GameFi narrative. It's a layer two scaling solution purpose built for GameFi and has attracted some of the top tier games and talent to its chain. Games like Alluvium, Gods Unchained, Shardbound, Amber Sword, and more. On top of that, Immutable has developed products like Passport, which drastically simplifies the wallet experience for gamers, making it seamless and easy for anyone with zero crypto experience to self-custody assets. It also has a ZK EVM rollup for gaming, developer SDKs, and order books and marketplace network, and so much more. If any place were to kick off the GameFi bull run to the masses, it would probably be Immutable X in my opinion. The market cap for Immutable is around 621 million with a fully diluted market cap of around $1.1 billion. If it were to reach its old all-time high from here, that would be a two point eight X. 
but consider Immutable launched at the end of the bull market in late 2021, and it really hasn't had a chance to take off during a bull run. My personal belief, and this is kind of a radical belief, is that we could potentially see Immutable 30 to 50x next bull run. A 50x would put it at around a 30 billion market cap, similar to projects like Polkadot, Cardano, and Solana last bull run. I do currently hold some IMX and I plan on buying more. Number nine is Axie Infinity. Axie is currently at a 600 million market cap and 1.2 billion in fully diluted value. And I personally wouldn't buy Axie Infinity at this price and honestly, I would just skip it altogether. Is it possible for Axie Infinity to go up in value? Absolutely, that definitely could happen. I mean, it's so stupid hard to predict all the insane things that could happen during a crypto bull run. But there are so many other interesting places to stick my money, and I'm just not interested in speculating on what will happen with Axie Infinity. Number 10 is Gala Games. And this is going to be a controversial take, but I'm not personally interested in Gala either. Maybe I just don't properly understand Gala, but with their node model and all the weird directions they keep going, I'm just choosing to focus my attention elsewhere personally. I'm not saying it's a bad company or that it's a bad place to invest. I just only have so many things I can focus on and I'm choosing to skip Gala. My view is you really shouldn't try to invest in everything out there. Instead, you should focus on key plays, stay up to date on those, research them, and go in depth. If somebody wants to try to convince me to go deeper on Gala, feel free to let me know in the comments. Number 11 is Games for a Living. And this project is a lot smaller than most on this list at just $12 million in market cap, but it is at 168 million in fully diluted value. And it looks like this token came out in spring of this year and has basically been up only to this point. They have a couple games. The, the only one that's out, uh, that's like their main game right now is Elemental Raiders. And it does look sort of interesting, but to me, it's really hard to predict where it'll go from here. 12 million means it's a low float token and could move up in price fast, but that's a high high fully diluted value, and as soon as they started diluting supply, it could push down the token price. I'd have to do a deeper dive and see what the token unlock schedule looks like. From the little bit of research that I've done, it looks like a lot of the price action that, you know, around this token has really come from influencers recommending the token. But I will say that the price climb has been very slow and steady, which is usually a good sign. Personally, for me though, I'm just gonna put a pin in this one and come back to it later. You can't invest in every single token you find, and you have to feel comfortable skipping projects you haven't done your research on. Last up is Engine. Once the king of GameFi engine has just moved too slow. Having been around since 2017, they haven't really done all that much. I used to be really bullish on engine and I made a lot of money on the engine token. But a while back, after being disappointed with their progress and speed, I ended up selling. Currently, their market cap is around 227 million and the fully diluted market cap is the same. Their all-time high is $3.5 billion, which is a 15X from here. But to be honest, outside of some major release that I don't know about, I don't really see them going back to their old all-time high again. So this is another one that I would pass on personally. As always, if this video was helpful, make sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified each time I release a video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.